One of the best plays so far during this bull run has been investing into base layer protocols and the products built on top of them when liquidity incentive programs are announced. This is because these liquidity incentive programs cause huge increases in the amount of users and also in the amount of money on these chains and in the protocols built on top of them, which causes the prices of the native coin to pump along with the tokens of the most popular projects. Some examples of chains this has happened to so far are Polygon, Avalanche and Phantom. And while there's no denying that there were plenty of profits to be made by investing when the liquidity incentives for these chains were announced, the people who made the largest gains, the huge multiples on the initial investments, were the people who were already invested before the incentives were announced. This is why today I'm going to be sharing a list of chains I think could have liquidity incentive programs in the future and how to get started using them. If that sounds good to you, then make sure to subscribe and activate the bell icon so you do not miss out on more videos like this, as well as everything else I post here on the channel. So this is going to be an interesting one for you. I've already talked about this previously a little bit, but we are going to dive much, much deeper today here. So to start off with, before I get into the list of potential chains, I want to go over a couple of different strategies you could use to profit from the growth they could see. The simplest and easiest ways is to just buy the native coin of the chain. That is basically a long call on the ecosystem as a whole because if the chain ends up seeing a lot of growth, there will be large amounts of people buying the native token to use for transactions as well as within protocols built on top of it. If you don't have the time or want to do the research to look into smaller projects on new chains, this could be the best strategy for you. However, if you do have a bit more time on your hands, you could consider a different strategy. A good way to find the best projects on a new chain is not just by doing research, but by actually trying them out for yourself. Uh, pretty much every new chain has very cheap transactions, so this is fairly easy and affordable to do. As a starting point, you can try out a few different DEXs, farm in a few different protocols, try out some lending and borrowing protocols, and then go from there to see what else is available. This hands-on type of research has several benefits. First, it will make it obvious which projects are the easiest to use and get started with. Those are the projects that will likely see a lot of growth when the masses comes later on. This is because people new to a chain don't want to use something complicated. They want to be able to get started quickly. Another benefit of this strategy is that we have been seeing a good amount of the projects on the new chains doing retroactive airdrops to users, meaning that if you try out a lot of different protocols, you are more likely to receive some of those airdrops, uh, which can then end up being worth a good amount of money. And uh, yeah, if you want a dedicated video actually on protocols, most likely, or you know, we feel have a high chance to actually uh, have some of those airdrops, well, let me know down in the comment sections. Those are projects which don't already have a token if that wasn't clear. So moving on, the first potential chain that could see a big liquidity incentive program in the future is the Kronos chain. I briefly mentioned this chain in a video from a while ago. Some of you may know that uh, Crypto.com has its own native chain called the Crypto.com Ord chain. However, they are also releasing the Kronos chain, which is designed more specifically for DeFi. The Kronos mainnet is not live yet, but will be launching on October 19th. This means that any of you watching this video could be among the first users on the chain. Kronos will have EVM support, meaning that projects from Ethereum will be able to be instantly ported over to Kronos once it's live. This allows the ecosystem to grow very quickly and also means that it will be very easy to start using as anybody with a MetaMask wallet or Ethereum compatible wallet will be able to just add Kronos as a new network. There are a few reasons I think Kronos could see a liquidity incentive program first. Crypto.com is a very successful crypto company, so they have the money to launch one second. They have already shown they are willing to use money to make Kronos a success by launching a fund that provides up to $1 million to products launching on the chain. Lastly, their Crypto.org chain has not seen as much adoption as other chains since its launch, so I think they may have learned a lesson that they will need something like a liquidity incentive program to grow Kronos when it goes live. And also, with Crypto.com, we already know that they have the syndicates, 
they have the supercharger, they already have these kind of, uh, they incentivize you to hold their token or incentivize you uh, to use their exchange in, in other ways as well. So we know that, yeah, this is probably something they are discussing very, very, very much right now. I do believe that. So yeah, Kronos is definitely, and Crypto.com is definitely one of my go-tos. I do have a big faith that this is going to happen uh, on, on that chain. So we will see about that. But the next potential chain is Terra. So the native Luna token itself has already done more than a 100x over the last year and has almost entered the top 10 coins by market cap. But the ecosystem as a whole has not seen as much hype or development as others. Additionally, it has not been adopted by many of the biggest Ethereum DeFi protocols that typically are willing to expand to new chains such as Curve, SushiSwap, Aave, or others. Similarly to Crypto.com, the Terra team has shown their willingness to use money to grow the ecosystem when they launched a $150 million ecosystem fund back in mid-July. This may sound similar to a liquidity incentive program, but it differs in that the money goes to the teams building projects rather than the people using them. This does help grow the ecosystem, but does not help bring in new users as much. However, uh, perhaps the team behind Terra wanted to allow the ecosystem to develop more before they launch a liquidity incentive program so the products would be ready for use by large numbers of users. Also, when it comes to Terra, this is one of a uh, few projects that I'm going to talk about today, which I don't believe is EVM compatible. So that's also explaining why you haven't seen as many projects being ported from Ethereum and from the Binance Smart Chain and so on uh, straight into Terra because they actually have to do some development <laughs> if they're going to you know, do something similar on, on the Terra ecosystem. That could uh, also be a good thing, but I just want to make that clear as well. So the next two chains are a bit different and uh, they are Solana and the Binance Smart Chain. These chains have both been around for a while now and are more established in terms of development and usage. However, there is a possibility that one or both of them could decide to launch a liquidity incentive program in an attempt to give a boost to their ecosystem and draw back some of the users who perhaps have left to move on to the newer chains. Both of these chains have the capital necessary to launch such a program, so it could make sense for them to do so in the future. One more thing I want to talk about today is uh, with a collaboration I have with uh, Yield App. So I want to give you an update on what's been going on over there. So I covered this project a bit less than two months ago when they reopened their Bitcoin fund. But if you missed that video, basically Yield App is a project that makes it easy for users to earn interest on a variety of different cryptos, including Bitcoin. And they have some of the best rates available, as you can see here you can earn up to 12% on Bitcoin, 16.5% on Ethereum, and 20.5% on USDC and USDT. Yield App launched earlier this year and has already more than $350 million in assets under management. They have also grown to have more than 60,000 users. Moving on to the Bitcoin fund, the lock-in period since the Bitcoin fund last reopened is ending, meaning if you want a chance to get invested into the fund, well, you can do so now. The fund is capped at a total of 1.5 thousand Bitcoin due to the strategies used to generate the returns, and it is filled on a first-come, first-served basis. Users can deposit into the fund until October 15th at 7 UTC or until that cap is reached, whichever comes first. The minimum investment is 0.03 Bitcoin. For those of you who invested into the fund the last time I covered it, you can withdraw during this time period or if you wish to continue earning, you can simply leave your Bitcoin where it is and you are all set. In other news related to YieldApp, the project has become the official digital asset wealth management partner of the West Ham United Football Club. This is already something I have been talking about previously, but following this partnership, the Yield token was also listed on the Bittrex exchange as the team continues to help Yield App receive mainstream adoption. If you want to invest into the Bitcoin fund or use the Yield App to earn interest on one of the other coins available, then you can do so using the link in the description. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you guys in the next one.